sound cut through the orange evening sky. A boy with long brown hair and light brown eyes wore a surprised expression on his face. I didn't expect to find you in a place like this. It's been five years, hasn't it? He said, tossing his sword aside as his burgundy garments fluttered in the wind. Another boy with long black hair, dressed in white with black sashes, also turned to the side, holding his sword with battle marks on his face. Has it really been that long? He replied, then turned to look at the brown-haired one and said, You've grown a lot since the last time I saw you, Jawoon Yeop. Doesn't seem like a situation for warm greetings, though. Jawoon put his hand on his hip and chuckled at these words. It was never like that anyway, was it? The black-haired one gave a faint smile with a somewhat pained expression and said, True. Jawoon placed his sword on his shoulder, assuming a superior posture, and said, I remember being severely reprimanded by the clan leader. I learned more than just one or two things from that kick that day. The black-haired one gave a slight smile and said, You've carried that incident with you all this time? Jawoon sarcastically smiled and said, What a choice of words. Could you forget something like that so easily? Of course not. As he spun his sword in his feet, advancing towards the other in a combat stance. It's different from before, the boy exclaimed. Jawoon struck with blows while the other defended, dodging them. Why don't you try receiving them at least once? The boy provocatively said to his opponent who began using a fighting style that blended his sashes with sword strikes. You're using a sword with your own distinctive fighting style, Jawoon remarked as the other quickly advanced, delivering a strike that confused him and narrowly avoiding a block. Could this be... Sima's sword technique? He exclaimed, thinking. I can't believe he's using that type of sword skill. Seolsu Bayom! Seolsu finished his attack with his sword raised in front emitting a blue glow as his hair was moved by the breeze. Jawoon thought, smiling, you've changed too, and a group of red butterflies appeared around him. Well, I always wanted to face someone like you. The battle paused, and we are taken back in time. This story begins in the Kamsuk Seol family, the most prominent among the Kamsuk families. The family palace had a banner in front displaying the clan symbol, resembling two swans facing each other with wings spread. There was a grand staircase with white, blue, and gray as the predominant colors. Through the view of the judgment of the Six Swords technique, Jawoon began to tell his story. I heard that on a cold winter day, a couple in poor attire abandoned a child at the gate of the Kamsuksiol family and disappeared. The child was picked up by a nanny and ended up becoming a servant of the Seol household. That child was me, Jawoon Yeop. Jawoon carried clothes, baskets, and performed servant tasks. I have served this house for almost ten years now. Don't they say even a village school dog can recite poetry after three years? Jawoon looked around with his distinctive, almost red-brown eyes. As I grew up here, I realized one thing. Contrary to popular opinion, our master is an extremely foolish person. The master of the house was a man with white hair, a short beard, and good physical shape. Jawoon watched him sitting in one corner of the training ground, thinking... The head of the Kamsuk Seol clan, Seol Sadeok, performs the family's secret technique every morning. His appearance resembles a dancing white crane, leading to his sword technique being named the white crane of fencing. However, as I observed this technique every day, I found an aspect that bothered me. Whenever possible, Jawun trained by replicating the master's movements. As I understand it, white crane fencing emphasizes defense, a stance that can be removed at any moment and become stronger in the next breath. However, in the later part of the technique, interrupting his train of thought, Master Sadeok called his attention. You, what are you doing there again? Jawun faked a smile and said, Ah, your fencing is so impressive that I momentarily got lost and was watching. The master, dripping with sweat from training, put one hand in front of his mouth, covering a smile and said, Hmm. What could a low-ranking servant like you understand even by watching? Jiwoon faked another somewhat uncomfortable smile and thought, I'll talk about the aspects of white crane fencing that bother me in the master's performance at another time. Anyway, the master must have researched this fencing technique for decades. And yet, even in the eyes of a low-ranking servant like me, the flaws in the fencing were apparent. Jiwoon observed silently until one of the older servants called him, You scoundrel! Stop disturbing the master and come here right now! Jawoon looked at the man and ran towards him with arms open, shouting, Grandpa, Grandpa, you're here! The man welcomed him warmly, placing his hand on the shoulder of the young Jawoon. 
Even though you're impressive, it's not polite for a servant to openly stare at his master. Be careful. Jawoon looked at the master and thought, it's hard to believe that such a person is considered a high-ranking martial artist. Another reason why I believe Master Sadiok is a foolish person. The master's first wife was a woman named Minga Yong. It is said that he treated Miss Min rudely. Although I only heard stories from other family members and servants as I wandered through the corridors, I could see how good Miss Min was. However, the two clashed in their opinions on crucial decisions. And upon reflection, no matter how many times it happened, Miss Min's thoughts were correct. So, during important matters, everyone in the Seal family followed and respected her. Miss Min had a kind expression, was friendly, and everyone bowed and greeted her. The head of the family, Seol Sadeok, became jealous of Miss Min's intelligence and began treating her colder and colder. Eventually, the master's coldness towards Miss Min extended to their children, and it didn't change until the moment she passed away. Sadeok did not mourn the death of his wife. His children mourned their mother's loss while he watched from afar, driving away his family with his foolishness and losing a wise wife. It is undeniable that our master is truly a fool. Now we are taken to another day in Jawoon's childhood, a bright and sunny day. But for now, let's set aside the Seol family's story and delve into my own. More precisely, the story of me, Jawoon Yap, and Seol Subayom. Jawoon smiled, going about his activities openly while Subiom observed in the background. Today's harvest was good again, Jawoon said when he was grabbed by the collar of his clothes. Hey, who dares to grab me by the neck? But when he turned around, he separated from Subiom's cold gaze who held him. Young master, we are transported to another moment on a sunny day in the bustling city. Jawoon, who was caught in the prisoner camp and served as a slave, began making deliveries around the city when he was around seven years old. The little one thought about his task list, counting on his fingers and carrying a backpack on his back through the streets. The grandmaster needs a brush and paper. The Mrs. Chanmo needs salt and garlic. As a result, he started paying attention to various things happening in the neighborhood. While walking, a boy in tattered and poor clothing caught his attention. Huh? It's that guy again? He thought, observing the boy's actions as he went to a crowded stall and slipped his small hand through the people to grab a snack. Most people his age that he encountered on the street were orphans like him. And since they didn't have money, they filled their stomachs by stealing food from other people's shops. Suddenly, an adult hand grabbed the boy's small wrist and pulled him away, dragging him while hitting his head. If any of them were caught for not being a good thief, they would be beaten until their soul left their body. Jawoon put his hand on his chin and gave a mischievous smile, thinking, But I'm different, even without looking around, I can feel how many eyes are watching me. And instinctively, I know how to move in a certain way to avoid the attention of the people around me. Then he placed the backpack on the ground and looked at it, thinking, That's how I got all this without raising suspicions from the shop owner. I've been grabbing snacks, fried rice, pancakes, etc. Jawoon took the backpack filled with snacks and handed it to a group of orphans while sitting on some nearby boxes. The village orphans for whom this was given naturally followed me. My special skill eased the hunger of the children. The orphans advanced on the food, grabbing more than one snack and stuffing them into their mouths. They didn't know when the next meal would be. Afterwards, they sat with Jawoon and chatted in a circle, laughing like the children they were. It wasn't such a bad feeling. Back to the earlier moment, we see that Jawoon was returning from one of his harvests for the boys, and Subayom was observing him from a distance. That day, as usual, I was excited to get my harvest and go home. I never imagined that a disaster awaited me. Subayom grabbed him by the collar and pulled him, making him protest. Hey, who dares to grab me by the neck? Then, Jawoon turned around and was startled to realize that he was in front of one of his masters. Put on the ground what you're holding. Subayom looked down at him with a cold gaze, took his backpack, and emptied its contents on the ground. This is from Mr. Hong's dumpling shop. This is from Mrs. Yugwa's snack shop near the alley. And this you stole from Mr. Yu's rice shop. Since when have you been stealing like this? Subiom held the empty backpack with a judgmental and fierce look towards Jawun, who had been caught off guard, drops of sweat running down his temples. Ha ha ha! What are you talking about? Without a reaction, Jawun thought. Not only did he catch me stealing, but he knows exactly where I stole from. This guy? But I've never seen the Grandmaster at the market. He thought, taking a step back while the Master said, Even now you're lying. 
and struck him with a kick to the stomach, causing the boy to fall to the ground still in shock. I've done this over ten times. How did I never notice the Grandmaster watching me? A crowd gathered to witness the incident. Standing, Subayom asked, Do you still plan to keep lying? While Jawun supported himself on both arms, trying to keep his face away from the ground and stand up, he thought, I was caught completely off guard. Jawun saw himself small, like a child shrunk in the palm of a much larger being. He thought, I'm scared. Everything I do in front of the Grandmaster seems to be as clearly visible to him as the inside of Buddha's palm. However, my fear was beyond the fear of receiving a kick or a slap. It was something more fundamental. The fear that there was someone who could see through me. The Grandmaster spoke, pulling Jawun out of his thoughts. Su Biom spoke harshly with his hand on his hip as his clothes were lifted by the wind. The stolen food scattered on the ground, and Jawoon was prostrated in front of him as a crowd passed by, observing the scene. It's understandable to steal when you're hungry, but if you keep stealing every time, you'll be nothing more than a thief for the rest of your life. What a dirty and shameful thing. Jawoon listened with fear and shame, thinking, He's deliberately reprimanding me in a public place so that my face becomes known on the streets. Subiom approached and said, Outside the front door of our house, there's a hole under the roots of the Zelkova tree. I'll put one of my wallets there every day. When you go out for your deliveries, take it with you and use it to buy food. Then he reached for his sword and said, In return, if you steal even once from now on, I will cut your wrists. He pointed the sword at Jowun's forehead, who was kneeling with his head down. Subayam turned and walked away, while Jawun thought embarrassedly, If I do this, I will become a servant who has made amends for his sins and gained his master's gratitude. He remained in the same position, thinking prostrate. I will no longer feel the adrenaline of stealing, knowing that my movements were not enough. His memory to identify and guess the origin of every stolen item. The perception that allowed him to instantly understand what kind of person you are, just by looking into your eyes. The Grandmaster, Seol Subiom, is the most terrifying human being I know. However, the head of the family, Seol Azdeok, did not recognize the great abilities of Master Subiom. He was consumed by passion for his new wife and was frolicking around with her. The new wife had the great master entangled in her strings like a puppet. That's why I think the family head is foolish. The new wife in question is the eldest daughter of the Gansukchu family, Chang Sanmi, Jawun thought. The new wife was seductive, always carrying a fan and dressed in purple. She's a clever woman who married into the Seol family, the leading family in Gansu, with the intention of seizing power. She used to bring people in her family to her side and sow discord between father and son. As Deok scolded his son with Sanmi by his side while Subiom listened silently. At first I was bothered by the sight of the master being reprimanded, but at some point it became irritating. Why did the master remain defenseless against the attacks of Chang Sanmi? With his level of skill, he could easily end her life with just a breath. I didn't like it at all. So even though I was just an observer, if there was an opening, I would have to join the conversation. Then, as he stared at Subiom after the reprimand, something caught Jawun's attention. A girl running through the large room. That, he thought, Seol Sanghi, the second daughter of the Seol family. A young girl with long brown hair. She looked around to check if she was alone or being followed, and Jawoon thought, What? This is the master's room. What's happening with Seol Sanghi? Of course, she's plotting something. The boy jumped upstairs to investigate, thinking, Now they're using their own daughter. I won't know unless I check for myself what kind of scheme this is. Since ancient times, conflict is something that grows and intensifies, especially in the conservative Seol family. Will we witness a proper confrontation between Chang Sanmi and the great master this time? Jawoon opened the door to the room and looked around, thinking, the careless Seol Sangi would definitely leave a mark, until he found a slightly open closet door, indicating recent disturbance. I knew it. He approached and opened the door. Well, let's take a look and see what she was hiding. He pulled out a scroll and sat on the floor to read. Hmm, what is this? Land documents? Hmm, I see. They are planning to create confusion and blame the master for losing land documents. If this is discovered, the great master would fall into an irreversible abyss. Then, standing up and holding the open scroll in front of him, Jawoon said, Okay, so, what should I do about this? Jawoon now stood in front of the closet with one hand on his hip, looking at the scroll. 
If this land deal is discovered in the young master's room, he will be accused of embezzling the family fortune. Surely Sanmi is targeting this. Remembering the incident at the market, Jawoon considered the possibilities. Even though the young master caused me shame and agonizing pain, he never broke his promise to pay for the children's food since that day. On that day, Jawoon stood up from the ground, wiping his face and glancing in the direction the young master had gone with a look full of anger. At first, I thought he was trying to maintain appearances by changing his habits a bit, and I thought he would stop after giving a few coins, but so far, rain or snow, the young master continued to put money in the hole. He never breaks his promises to his servants, so he is worthy of being called the young master of a prestigious family. However, such uprightness did not protect him from Sanmi's petty tricks. Jowon continued to think, now rolling up the scroll. Still, how could I be deceived by someone like Seol Sanghi? If the great young master disappears like this, what will happen to my severely damaged dignity? Furthermore, the war between Sanmi and the young master that I anticipated so much will end before it even begins. Do you think I'll just let that happen? He said, squeezing the scroll and looking in its direction as if speaking to the paper. For a fight to be interesting, both sides must be evenly matched. If one side is too strong, the fight will end before it even starts. And if one side is too weak, the fight won't be worth watching. In both cases, there is no purpose in watching the fight. And what would be the purpose of living if you can't appreciate a good fight? Juwan hugged the scroll and quietly left the room, looking around as he thought, So, this is just me protecting my happiness. It's not because I'm impressed by the young master's kindness, or because I respect his outstanding skills and uprightness, or because he is kind to hungry children. No, definitely not. And he walked away, pouting. A few days later, in the Zhi family, it was a sunny day, and Azdeok Sanmi Sangi gathered in the main hall while Subayom knelt, waiting. Azdeok began to speak. Seal Subayom, you bastard. Do you know why you were summoned here? The young master replied without lifting his gaze. No, I don't know. Everyone from Chusanmi and Seol Sanghui had gathered early in the morning, and Jawoon wondered what they were up to. Are you trying to deny? The land deal I recently signed is gone. You don't know where it is? Subayom kept his head low and answered with closed eyes. Yes, I don't know. The family head became furious, raising his fist and demanding an explanation, shouting as people passed by. So you're saying the land deal grew legs and ran away on its own? Don't just stand there, speak. You really know nothing about it? Sanmi, the wife, was by his side, giving an innocent smile, saying, I'm not quite sure, but I notice the young master has been going to the slums a lot lately. He's already grown up, so I worry he might pick up the habits of street children. I'm just concerned. The young master glared angrily at Sanmi, clenching his fists. The woman hid a malicious smile behind her fan, and her sister Sangi smiled along behind her. I see. So now you're trying to frame me as a thief? Subayam thought. Oh, yes. Now that I think about it, yesterday while I was doing the laundry, I saw something like a scroll in the young master's room. Sangi said with an air of innocence, If I am unjustly accused here, all my hard work will have been in vain. I've endured in silence all this time to keep my promise to my grandmother. But this kind of nonsense, the gray-eyed boy, Subayom, thought, and gave a slight sarcastic smile, saying, The second daughter of the Seol family helping the servants. That's new. You have a good heart. Sangi nervously smiled as a drop of sweat trickled down her temple and stammered a response. Uh, uh, yes. I guess you didn't know because you spent so much time in the slums. Subayom remembered witnessing his sister beating and humiliating the servants, and he thought, you're lying without even a twitch of your face. I saw you clearly beating the less fortunate as if they were insects. She would strike them with a raised stick and yell, What are you doing, you mediocre servant? Get up and go to work. The boy continued to think, Even now my father can't see through this low trick? The family head gritted his teeth in anger and ordered, Search the young master's room immediately and find the scroll. The servants responded, Yes, sir, and left to carry out the orders. Shortly after, one of them returned holding something in his hands. The servant bowed and presented the item he had found with both hands. Master, I found the scroll. It was in the young master's closet, just as the young lady had said. The master turned and said, Hmm, I knew it. I'll know what it is when I read it. As the servant handed over the scroll, 
Subiom thought, looking down sadly. Even the servants would be ashamed of the farce unfolding in this family. The family head opened the scroll and said, let's see. A surprised and irritated expression took over his face. Huh? What the hell is this? This isn't a land document. It's a drawing. Inside the scroll were several stick figure drawings. A man, a bird, and what looked like a sword. Graphite drawing, Subayam thought, surprised. This is ridiculous, but it's definitely the first form of the judgment of the six swords technique. Jawun Yap, it was that kid who did this. Subayam bowed with a slight smile on his face and said, I hid it in my closet because I was embarrassed about my drawing skills. Is there something wrong with that? From a distance, Jawun observed sitting on a tree branch. The family head looked dissatisfied with the situation, demanding an explanation from Sanmi. Subayom raised his eyes and stared directly at Jawun. The boy was startled. Ah, how did he know I was here right away? He really is a scary person. Subayom returned his gaze to his father and said, So, father, can I go back now? The family head rolled up the scroll and said, Of course, of course you can go back. Sangi protested, But father! And the wife Sanmi responded with a dark aura, Seol Sangi, stop now! And so, the case of the stolen land deal came to an end. The land agreement, which was the evidence in this case, was still in the hands of Jawun, who was crouched under a tree in the still dark dawn, thinking as the breeze rustled the leaves, Huh, I doubt anyone would have imagined that the culprit would be a young servant who makes deliveries. He reached into the tree roots, finding the hole where the young master always left the money pouch. That said, for how long will you let yourself be treated like this? At least you should know how to protect yourself. If you're going to let that bastard take advantage of you every time. As he looked at the money pouch in his hands, a voice interrupted Jawoon. So it was you after all. Turning surprised, the boy saw a girl with long black hair, a sweet smile on her face, violet blue eyes, and a flower in her hair. Miss Seol Suyan, he exclaimed, recognizing the youngest daughter of the family. Are you surprised? I apologize. The girl was dressed in a kimono with details and flowers in lilac. What is the young miss doing at this hour of the morning? Jawoon said, hiding the money pouch behind his back. I just thought you might be stealing. I heard from my brother that you've been providing food for the hungry children, the girl said with another gentle smile. I see. Jawoon said, stopping his attempt to hide the money and thinking, damn, even the young miss is quite perceptive. The girl continued her speech. Although stealing is not the right way to do things, I think you can be proud of yourself for what you've done. It's good to know that there are still people in this world who understand the meaning of kindness. Jawoon raised his hand and rolled his eyes. Oh no, that's not the case. I just had the bad habit of stealing. Even though I helped the young master this time, I was just angry because I had been beaten by the youngest daughter. Anyway, I'm not as good a kid as you think I am, he said, turning his face away and surprising Suyan. But it didn't take long for his face to break into a smile again, so he turned, making a gesture to leave. Still, I want to thank you. I'm really glad that you, the clever one, helped my brother. Jawoon scratched his head as the girl walked away, thinking, if it were the young master, he probably wouldn't say I'm clever, but rather a cunning thief the kindness of being able to find positive things in someone and talk about them. A gentle nature where she doesn't rush, despite being intelligent. Instead, she observes her surroundings first. Jawun put a hand on his chin and closed his eyes in a thoughtful pose. Even though Chusanmi acts cruelly, was she holding back because of the reputation of being the best in the world? It's better to be a servant like me who has nothing to lose. Tsk. Who cares about family honor or the ancestor's name? Sometime later, a servant rushed to Subiom's room and announced, Young master, your grandmother. Subiom was shocked and worried, and Jawoon thought, Anyway, the young master and the young miss, how will they deal if what they fought so hard to protect suddenly disappears? It's really frustrating. Subiom walked slowly into the hall, as if his delay could prevent reality from unfolding. He had an expression of pure sadness and denial on his face. Light streamed in through the door casting a shadow over the body covered by a sheet. He approached and lifted the sheet slightly, saying, Grandma, as he brought his grandmother's hand to his forehead in mourning. Young master, they heard in their minds, recalling his grandmother's voice from when she had sat on the bed and spoken to him earlier. Internal family conflicts will only lead to unnecessary sacrifices. 
you must always protect the Z family as the eldest son. This is your grandmother's final wish. Subiom took his grandmother's pale hand and kissed it, furrowing his brow to hold back tears. Forgive me, Grandma. The voice of the grandmother's spirit echoed, saying, My son. And the boy remained prostrate beside the body, saying, I can no longer protect our current Z family. Outside, a strong wind blew. To those outside the family, it might have seemed like a normal sunny day. The funeral proceeded in a somber atmosphere. Everyone gathered around the coffin in traditional white attire, paying their respects. Let's discreetly dismiss her, said the man in charge of Jawoon, both of whom were at the wake as servants. Observing everything from a corner, Miss Suyin mourned, wearing a hood to hide the sadness on her face, while her servant shed tears beside her. The sight of the young master prostrate next to the coffin in grief was the most difficult for Jawun to witness. However, he couldn't intervene in such matters as he did in the land incident. He could only watch from a distance. Jawan looked to the side, observing his grandfather with a saddened, contracted expression, affected by the loss of the matriarch. Now, the Z family would fall into the hands of Chusanmi. If that happens, the young master... As days passed, the wife and the young master would cross paths in the corridors, yet nothing happened. She would pass by him, not saying anything, but would flash a mischievous smile when no one was looking. Strangely, Chusanmi had left Subeom alone, as if she were waiting for the right moment. And so, around a month passed, leaves fell, and the season changed. Since the matriarch's passing, the young master constantly found himself lost in thoughts, Jawun could vaguely imagine the thoughts that made him withdraw, sit by windows, and tighten his grip on his sword. Thus, Jawun had to make some preparations. On one of the following days, near dawn when the sky was just beginning to lighten, Subiom went to the tree's root hole where he kept the money pouch and deposited the item, saying, This must be the last deposit, as his words escaped with the morning's cold air. Then, he turned and departed on his way. But before he could go far, a voice caught his attention. Just as I expected, it's broken again. He turned to see Jawan sitting on one of the tree branches, leaning his arm on his knee and smiling. Oh, it's you again! Jawun began rummaging through his clothes, seemingly retrieving something, and said, If the young master has made such a big decision, well, he'll need a reasonable amount of money to carry out such a decision. He handed Subayom the land agreement scroll, saying, Take this with you, extending the scroll towards Subayom, who remarked, so, you were waiting for me, as if you already knew I was leaving. Jawun then replied as he descended from the tree, I've been waiting for you on this cold night. The two stood facing the tree, staring at each other as the wind blew. Honestly, I don't understand. Jawun opened his arms in disbelief, saying, Why are you leaving the Z family on your own? You had several chances to go against Miss Chu. You should at least demonstrate the true qualities of the eldest son of an orthodox family, as you did with me. Why do you hide your abilities to this extent? Subiom lowered his head and replied, I know that wasn't my grandmother's wish. She didn't want her son and grandson to fight. With his current daughter-in-law causing the downfall of her son, she wouldn't like this disastrous outcome. Subiom raised his heed, looking at the horizon, and flashed a sad smile. However, now that my grandmother is no longer here, I have no reason to cling to it anymore. Make no mistake, I will come back. Jawun listened turning his head slightly to absorb the information and choices. He continued, The forces attacking us have deep roots in the martial arts world, like a snake in the grass. Now that Chusanmi has taken control of the Shi family, the Chu family is probably planning to discard me and then my father. My father will eventually realize, even if it's too late by then. Determination took over his posture and voice. Su Beom added, But I am the eldest son of the first Gansu family. I cannot just sit and watch. I will become stronger than I am now and deal with all of them. Looking down, Subayom finished speaking, and Jawun took a few steps forward, standing close to him with a smile, hand on his waist, and looking up due to the height difference. Indeed, I understand your words. It seems even the young master finds it challenging to grow stronger in the current Z family. The young master didn't move, only asking, What are you trying to say? Jawun began his explanation, blinking and holding his chin with one hand. The arrogance and tedium of orthodox methods. For example, the best martial arts technique in Gansu, Baikok swordsmanship, 
The fifth form of this style, dual sword fencing. Jawoon then crouched down, holding the scroll to the side, assuming the position and posture imitating the mentioned stance. Two sword styles combine offense and defense with the sword. In order to be able to withdraw, you need to exert more force and push your hips down like this. Bringing Master Sadeok's training to mind, Jawoon compared himself to him, training superiorly with clean movements. But our family refuses to adopt this posture, deeming it unimpressive and unsuitable for the orthodox style, leaving vulnerabilities. Wouldn't it be time for you to go beyond the limitations of the C family and see what you can learn outside? Subayom widened his eyes at these statements and said, You, I admit I understand your perspective, but surely you're not trying to insult our Z family right in front of me, are you? He loosened his sword a bit, ready to draw it. Zhao Wun openly smiled and said with a mischievous and clever pose, Of course not. I also grew up eating and living in the Zhi family. It just seems to me that the power of the unorthodox part is stronger than the orthodox part. I came to bid farewell to the young master, who was embarking on a long journey because I was concerned, Jawoon said, raising the land contract again, which was soon taken from his hands by Su Biom. He grabbed the scroll, smiled, and said, All right, whether you become orthodox or not, just keep being who you are, please. And if you steal or do something wrong, I'll be the one to punish you. Then he added one last request. There's one last thing I want to ask. Jawoon let his shoulders slump and asked, And what would that be? The young master continued with the request. If Su Yon is in trouble, just once, as I did with you, help that child. Su Yon was inside the walls at another point of the house, strolling through the garden, observing the flowers finally blooming on the trees and the cold night air slowly leaving her body. Su Yon is a clever child, but in any case, continue showing interest in her, just as you have been doing. Subayom said to Jawoon, who opened his eyes surprised and blushing at the choice of words, and said, In... interest? Then he took a more defensive and slightly irritated stance, saying, What are you talking about? When did I show interest in Miss Suyon? Subayom covered his laughter with the scroll, saying, Child, getting worked up like that with the word interest. Are you really concerned about Suyon? Then he threw the scroll back into Jawoon's hands, saying, This is unnecessary. Do whatever you want with it. I hope your mischievous ways bring more entertainment to the world. The young master left with these final words. It seemed like the last conversation between two brothers, something I realized much later. Time passed, and now Jawoon was harvesting herbs sprouting from the ground, storing them in a basket. Flowers bloomed more and more from the trees. Hmm, I think this should be enough. Everyone is waiting, so I shouldn't be late, Jawoon said to himself. Time passed quickly, and before we knew it, Spring had arrived. Jawoon stood up, placing the herb harvest on his back. As spring approached, the days grew warmer. By this time, less than half a year had passed since the young master's departure. But Jawoon had grown like bamboo during that period. Thanks to this, he was able to perform more tasks, traveling here and there. Each time, they explored the areas thoroughly, covering both sides of the village and its surroundings. He now walked carrying a yellow flower close to his chest, looking around during the sunny day. Jawoon ensured the well-being of the people the young master had left behind. Fortunately, Suyan was doing well, with no major concerns. Unlike the young master, she had no reason to confront Chusanmi. Subiam probably foresaw this and had to rely on Suyun's intelligence before leaving alone. Yet, he departed, leaving one last assurance. Jawoon. The boy was back in town with his harvest, walking and thinking with a somewhat displeased expression, the young master's ability to influence people with just a few words shows that he is much more powerful than I am, doesn't it? As he walked, Jowen overheard two gossiping residents. Is someone from the Yayol family coming? What's going on? He interrupted them by handing over the requested herbs, placing the basket right between the two. Well, I'm back, he said, sitting beside them with a relaxed smile. Ah, as expected, it's Jowen Yap. You skillfully chose only the beautiful ones. Taking the compliment, he asked, Is there something else going on? One of the girls immediately started talking. The Yayul family is sending someone, and it seems they are planning a long stay. Make sure we have an ample stock of food prepared. Jawun sighed and replied, Ah, I guess since they are the main family of Kamsuk Sol, they are aware of their dignity in various ways. However, he thought to himself, But it's strange. 
The Yayul family is not known for receiving generous treatment from the Kamsuk family. Jawun's reasoning was interrupted by two younger boys playing with swords and shouting for his attention. Jawun Yap, please look at my sword skills. Before Jawun could respond, one of the girls who had hired the herb delivery shouted and threw a handful of money at them. Hey, you two be quiet. Go and buy whatever you want to eat. Not just any food, but everything suitable for a feast. With these preparations, it seems there's a celebration happening. Jawun listened as the girl gave instructions to the boys and wondered, A celebration? One of the boys waved the coins in front of the other, saying, Since I made the deal, this money is mine. Jawun continued to reason, trying to understand the situation. A feast for external guests? There hasn't been anything to celebrate in the village recently. What is this? He pondered, a look of concern taking over his face. Please accept, said Chusanmi, placing a white envelope on the table covered with a golden cloth. It is said to be a treasure for you. The young master of the Yayul family seems to have sincerely exerted effort in the engagement with Miss Suyun, Chusanmi said, hiding her smile behind her usual purple fan. Suyun listened, holding her hands in front of her chest with a distressed expression. Now it's the turn of our Kamsuk Seol family to lead and take care of various people. I believe Suyun feels the same way, Chusanmi continued. The girl sat down and continued listening with her hands resting on her knees and head lowered. With the family head busy and the young master absent indefinitely, as the eldest daughter, it is your duty to handle foreign relations. Please understand and support me for the family, Chusanmi said with a malicious smile. Suyan didn't respond, remaining silent and continuing with her routine as usual. In the training field, Jawun practiced using the sword technique he had learned from the great master through observation. He had precise, polished, and fast movements. In the absence of the young master, the attempts made were not only to bring external forces to control the Kamsuk Seol family, but they also tried to sell Suyun as a tool. As a servant of the Kamsuk Seol family, there was a limit to the information Jawun could gather. While training, now inside a room, he thought, if Suyan goes somewhere else, all I'll have left to do. Then he stopped and put his hand on his head, dissatisfied. Ah, this damn white crane fencing is not what I wanted to learn. A loud crash caught Jawoon's attention, making him startle as the door to the room had been flung open. What's this? Is this brat swinging a wooden stick? He heard this voice and thought as he saw the two petty and rude figures standing in the doorway with a superior pose. Seol Sangwil and Seol Sanghi, why are they here? They continued in a disapproving tone. This insolent child, what do you think you're doing with such arrogance? Jawun bowed, making a gesture of respect and said, I was cleaning up the debris scattered by the firewood. The brothers approached him saying, is this picking up tree branches for you? Jawun didn't respond but thought, these kids, are they plotting something again? The boy Sangwil took the wooden stick from Jawun's hands and said, I heard you've been secretly watching my father's martial arts training every morning. You servant, do you want to learn martial arts like me? Said Seol Sangwil, the second son of the Kamsuk family. Then, he delivered a blow that hit Jawun squarely and threw him to the ground. How about this? I'll personally teach you how to use a sword, Sangwil said, resting the stick on his shoulder with his sister Sangi by his side with a mocking smile. I see, these guys... They were investigating the servants of the Kamsuk Seol family under Chusanmi's orders, Jowun thought, and Sangi said, Get up, laughing as if it were all a joke. From now on, I'm going to swing this piece of wood so you try to defend yourself. Sangwil had a malicious smile on his face as he said this, and Jowun struggled to get up from the ground due to the impact. Why are you hesitating? Don't you want to do this? And he charged at Jowun, attacking with the stick turned toward him, while our protagonist gritted his teeth and thought, no matter what, this brat has no sense of respect. Do you really want to be defeated by me? A nobody who isn't even a master? Then, he quickly stood up and deftly avoided the frivolous and unstructured attack that Sangwil had unleashed. The two siblings were left dumbfounded, not understanding, while Sangwil was about to fall on the ground. Sanghi shouted, Appa! And upon seeing her brother lying, she turned around and caught Jawoon by surprise from behind, restraining him and saying, Sangwil Opa! Show him what you've got! The boy got up from the ground, furious, and said, How dare you blatantly dodge my attack! This left a mark on my precious face! And he punched Jowen in the stomach, saying, You brat taking advantage of our home! 
Zhao Wen spat as he received punches while being held by Sang He. He thought, damn, I got angry for no reason and made the situation worse. Now I have no choice but to endure this until Sang Wheel gets tired. The boy continued to vent his frustration, landing direct blows to Zhao Wen's torso, targeting punches to his stomach. Until he threw a straight punch at his jaw and he thought, these kids, they always make everything harder for me. Damn. If the young master had accepted the land deal, maybe I would be free. What can a lowly brat like me do, young master? Jawun thought, now resigned, head lowered, with the marks of the fight on his body, standing only because he was being lifted by Sanghi who immobilized him. Meanwhile, he imagined what could motivate him. It would be good if someday I could meet the young master again, this time with impressive martial arts skills that are my own. Jawun envisioned in his mind a battle where Subiom and he faced each other, but no matter how hard he tried, he ended up losing. A blow from the young master sent him flying backward with force. Still, here I am, a mere servant who swung a piece of wood. It's natural to take blows because of my low status. Learning fencing seems like a distant fantasy. Of course, I would prefer to perish with a simple breath from the young master as I age. How absurd would it be for me to appear challenging, muttering in the presence of the young master? In this condition, neither Su Yan nor anyone else will be able to protect me from anything. Zhao Wen visualized himself being defeated by Subiom at that moment, shame being his downfall. I will probably crawl in the dust, unable to distinguish heaven and earth. If you see me in such a pathetic state later, young master, what expression would appear on your face? Zhao Wen lifted his face and saw Subiom looking at him with contempt. Then, that gaze brought him back from his reverie. I hate this. I hate all of this. Nothing has changed since the past. Even in my situation where I am being beaten by a lightweight that doesn't even come close to a tenth of the young master. It's truly disgusting. When Zhou Wen was already on the ground, a figure appeared at the door. The two children stopped and looked surprised. What are these kids doing? She shouted. They asked, who is it? But Zhou Wen soon recognized her. As Su Yun approached, the siblings stood still with an expression of dissatisfaction, as if offended by being interrupted. So Yun knelt beside Zhou Wen placing his head in her lap carefully not to worsen his injuries. A look of sadness, pity, and empathy took over the face of the first daughter. If you enjoyed today's recap and want more Manhua content, subscribe to the channel. We're starting this journey now, and I hope that together we can strengthen this new community. So go ahead and like the video, comment for future parts, and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time.